when you when you sell a business, there's so many different things that are going on. So we had a substantial cash buyout, but then we also had an earnout, um, which those are usually designed for you to lose. And I'll give you guys a tip when you guys do sell or have the opportunity. And this was told to me not too long ago. And I tell all of my uh, our members this now. I'm like, don't don't forget about this. So I'm just going to tee it up, tease it. Like kind of I'm taking your guys, you know, lead on that one. So we'll tease it, tell you in a little bit. But um, we had a cash and then I had equity in the company as well. Um, and then we actually had a role in there. So I, it, I turned into an employee, which <laughs> is never a good thing, <laughs> I think, especially when you're doing it for 11 years and you're like, uh, yeah, I'm not going to do you. it. So, but that you. was, that was the structure of the deal. Um, to go back to the earnout, earnouts are designed to lose. I always tell people be happy with the cash that you get up front because most of the time earnouts are, you're not going to get, but here's what you can do is say, we are not going to tell anybody other than our internal team that we were sold. You are not going to have any control of our company until everything is paid up, including the earnout. So I have the opportunity to hit my numbers because the company buying you, they'll say they want you to hit the numbers, but a lot of times they'll be like, no, we don't want to pay out millions more. And so what you'll do is you'll put in the stipulation, you do not take control until everything is paid. And if you can't pay the earnout and I hit the numbers, I get the company back and I keep the cash. Hmm. So for everybody thinking of selling, make sure you put that in your deal. I'm skeptical of that. The, unless you're in a bidding war, like that's a big ask, at least in my or, experience well, talking to these. That's people. the first ask. Okay. The second one. It's a, it's a good ask, I'm, by the way. It's a good ask. Yeah. <laughs> ask for whatever you want. If you want to learn how to fly, there you go. But what they'll probably agree on is you'll have the option to buy them back at what they gave you on the cash. So you keep that cash, you keep investing that because it's usually over a year to two years, you invest that. If they can't do it, your company's like, if you hit the earnout, you're already bigger. So your valuation just went up anyway. Right. So you, hell yeah, you're going to buy your company back at a discount. You've already made interest on that money and you haven't told any clients. No one from the outside knows about it. So it's like it never happened. You need to find a way to tax defer the income, right? Because otherwise, there's a twenty percent diminishment. And well, so if you pay me a million, oh, correct, yeah, for the broker and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. I'm not negating what you're saying. I'm just working this out practically because I think it's super sharp. I didn't do this in my exit, and uh, really, my plan was like a child. I decided if I'm happy with the cash at close, I'm going to exactly. pretend like the earnout doesn't exist. And if it happens, like Merry Christmas, me. Yes. And, yeah. and that's what I've always thought until I was chatting with someone and they actually did this. They actually had a, an agency um, that was under a million in EBITDA and was valued at 25 million. I about fell out of my chair. I was like, where can I find this stupid buyer? Like they need to write like, what, I mean, do they have IP or software? How did no, they do that? no. Super special niche. Yes. Like what was the special niche, no. right? No, no, no. And got like 10 million cash. And I was what? like, what? Yeah. Like it was crazy to me. Um, but he told me this and, and they, they were about to hit the earn out because they have now like they, when they sold, they were 200 people when they hit the earnout, they were like 400. And he was like, you know, he was like, I'm just buy back. I'll buy us back. And then he sold it again. And I got really good multiples because now they were well over the eight figure mark. So, um, yeah, it was just pretty, pretty clever. So just a helpful tint to remember the other hint I'll tell you before you sell a lot of times when you sell a business, they'll buy you as an asset purchase. So they're not buying all your liabilities. And so a lot of times what they'll do is they'll say, Hey, I need you to go to, and I need you to go to your five biggest clients and let them know and get them to sign this permission form saying you can transfer if you are sold. 
So what I want you to do is put in your agreements, and I'm not a lawyer, so you can't sue me, but just ask your lawyer, but to say, hey, we have the right to transfer um, this contract to anyone else by just giving you written permission or written notice. Dude, that's the best advice anybody's ever dropped on an exit. I, I lucked out my business mentor is an M&A guy, and I mentioned to him in passing a few years ago that I might want to sell. First question out of his mouth. Are your agreements transferable? Transferable. First question out of his mouth. And I was like, I don't know. How would I know that? And he goes, if they're, and I had 200 clients when I sold, which is a lot for an agency. And he's like, if they're not transferable, that's a deal killer. Cause now I got to go to every single one of those and say, mother, may I? And you know, yep. there's just no way you get enough of them past the finish line to make that deal. So yeah, that's, that's great advice. Michael Jordan said, get the fundamentals down and the level of everything you do will rise. Now, that's an interesting quote to read and, you know, spew on a YouTube video. But what if you were to really integrate that? Like, what if we went back to fundamentals on a regular basis or at least a semi-regular basis and made sure to sharpen the saw, to steal from 